Welcome to the grand finale of the world's biggest cooking competition. This season, for the first time ever in MasterChef history, we are battling each other to find the greatest home cook in America. And now, it's down to just three. Buckle up, it's starting right now. The search for the next MasterChef started with thousands of hopeful home cooks from all across the country. Each judge had just eight aprons to hand out to the hopeful home cooks. Boy, do I see potential. And we each battled it out to have the opportunity to mentor the best of the best. When you have talent like this, you can't let it walk out the door. Once one of our white aprons yeah. was in their hands, let's go! The home cooks began the journey of a lifetime. Woo! So beautiful. This season, the challenges were more difficult than ever before. Switch! The contestants survived intense MasterChef team challenges. Oh, my God! Whoa. They're landing for dinner! As the competition got tougher... I got tables that are ready to walk out. I need the food! We sometimes had to send home our own home cooks. I gave you both aprons because I believed in both of you. Please, place your apron on your bench. <sighs> Now, only three home cooks remain, and each judge finds themselves with one home cook in the finale. So, the stakes are just as high for us, because only one home cook will become America's Master Chef. Now, last week, the contestants were sent home to prepare for the finale, and we went to surprise them in their hometowns to make sure that they were on track to take home the trophy. Hello? Hello? Hey. Are you both there? Hey, Gordon. I'm just rolling through downtown Nashville. What's happening with you all? Hey, Joe. How's Music City, my friend? What's that noise in the background? Where are you? Yeah, I'm kind of in the swanky downtown part of Houston. I think you're lost. No, no, no. I should be at Caesar's house shortly. This is why we never let you drive. Because you're always getting lost. <laughs> Ron, pull it together and get to where you're going. Looks like I'm here, guys. About to visit America's next master chef. Talk to you later. Bye. Are you guys still there? Hello? Hello? This is unreal. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Oh, ah! oh, I had to move back home after I left my career as a teacher. Oh, my I mean, it's embarrassing living with my parents at 28 years old. Sit down. But I have to do whatever it takes to pursue this culinary dream. <laughs> Here we are. The young lady is back at home. Back home. Because she wants to follow this food dream. When she called me and said she was going to quit her job to be a chef, I was like, what? <laughs> I was nuts. When Ashley started actually cooking here, yes. we doubted it. For a while, we got a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but we made sure she had everything she needed. Trust me, food is definitely her calling. And if she wins, it's going to be one of my proudest moments ever. I want this for myself, but I want this for them. They have literally... Damn. Even though they didn't agree with me, they have never turned their back on me. So how do you repay them? I don't know. <laughs> you know, just like every... You become America's Next Master Chef. <laughs> oh my God! Absolutely. Seeing Gordon is just invigorating. Seatbelts on, please. Because I get to share with him who I am and where I come from. It's very important for Gordon to understand how I operate and why I operate the way I do. I have not come all the way to Opa Laka <laughs> without going to the farmer's market. <laughs> oh, See. my goodness. Getting to show him all of the exotic <laughs> fruit that I've grown up with, I couldn't have asked for a better moment. So this is where you shop? This is where I shop. What an oasis. <laughs> I know. Give me a little insight, yes. just a little snippet of the yes. menu. Uh, where are we going? We're in it. Yes. Miami, opalaka yes. flavors, Smart. citrus, seafood. Good. I am mixing my southern roots with French cuisine and hopefully give you a feel of like that Michelin star flair. I am going to wow you. Forget 
everybody around you yes. and focus on three things. Okay. The appetizer, <laughs> the entree, yes. and the dessert. Yes. Ignore everything, everything else. else. Steely, focus. That's what you need to bring to the finale. Yes. Okay. Yes. I am ready to kick some butt. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. You can do this. Thank you. Oh. I cannot wait for this finale. Today, I want you to write about a story that you plan to tell your children someday. Being back home has been amazing. To see my kids' faces for the first time in months, it means the world to me. Something that you've experienced, OK? Mr. Hurd, can I interrupt your class? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How are you? With the finale right around the corner, I've been cooking every single day. What's going on, guys? I've really been pushing myself to focus on plating so that I can bring that MasterChef trophy home. So I invested one of my eight aprons in him because I believe that he had the passion and he had the skills. And I think the greatest thing is he is an incredible student. So I'd love to hear from some of you guys the impact that Mr. Hurt has had on you and your lives in this classroom. Like, when he came, I just thought he was going to be like another teacher. But he actually was connecting with students. Like, he actually came to the basketball games. He'll leave his door open for students to come in during lunch and stuff like that. We don't really have that many male figures in the school. We can really relate to Mr. Earth. His background is similar to mine. Just knowing how far he's come, I feel like I can achieve the same, the same thing. My students, they grow up in these rough neighborhoods and rough communities. Well, guys, thanks for sharing your stories. I know where they come from. I've been there and I've done that. And so if I win the MasterChef title, I'm taking that money back and I'm going to open up a culinary institute to make sure that I give my students a chance so that they can better themselves. So you've been here in Nashville two years now. You know, you came in with Southern flavors. I'm sure that has its roots here in Nashville. Tell me about that. The food scene here is amazing. Hot chicken is something that I experienced when I first got here, and I got into the MasterChef kitchen on hot chicken. Speaking of that, finale's coming. What are you thinking? Southern, Southern, you know, anytime I can stay true to my roots, it's gave me positive results. I'll tell you what, it's got to be elevated, though. It, it does. I'm going to give you some advice. Think like you're in like a really luxurious restaurant in a city like New York or Paris. Flavor, presentation, sophistication. That as much as I think sticking to your roots is fundamental, make sure you bring the level. I've done so much to get here at this point, and I am ready. You got a wit for those kids I met in the classroom. You got a lot riding on this, Jerome. I got you, Joe. It's game time. My eyes on the prize. All right, Jerome, I'm counting on you. And I can see that Master Chef trophy sitting in my living room. Finale, I'm coming for you. Eat a chicken. Eat a yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Food plays such a big role in my family. And my mom is the greatest source of inspiration in my culinary journey. Uh, come in! Hola! I know my mom is beaming and excited to have our food and our culture represented in the finale. He has beat out thousands of people in this country. Yes. How proud are you guys of him, huh? Oh, my God. Oh, pues imagínate, para mí sería un orgullo bien grande porque que cuando yo me vine a, a este país, él era bien chiquito, o sea, él siempre ha sido mi soporte. O sea, dejé mi familia, dejé a mis papás, dejé todo, todo. Pero si él gana, valió la pena. Ya casi está ahí. She was a teacher in Mexico, and she couldn't continue that career here because she stayed home to take care of us, which was the most important thing. She practically gave up her life to make sure we had a life. It's a huge deal. That's an honor and a huge deal, and I take it very seriously. That's why I want to make the best uh, menu I can put together for that finale. So what are some of the thoughts? So I've been thinking something with duck, pato maybe as my entree. Mm -hmm. Chocolate, definitely in the dessert, because, you know, Mexico, Aztecs, Crocodile. chocolate. Uh, it's the appetizer where I'm still a little iffy. Well, think about what is the basis of Mexican food. Yes, chef. And hopefully being home will allow you to get inspiration and love from the people that care about you the most, yeah. OK? Si se puede. Si se puede. It's so refreshing to have my mentor here. I definitely needed that guidance. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you guys so much. I only have one shot to get this right, so I'm focused, I'm determined. Bye. I have to bring everything I have to take that trophy home.
Up first in this three-way culinary battle, a young man in my apron. Season. A 33-year-old high school English teacher from Houston, Texas. The first hurdle that stands in Caesar's way is a home cook that took my apron, my protege, Ashley. A 28-year-old professional grocery shopper from Opelika, Florida. And our final home cook, a young man that I have mentored through the entire competition, Jerome. A 25-year-old English teacher from Louisville, Kentucky. Now, throughout this competition, you've had a lot of obstacles thrown your way, including extremely talented opponents. But tonight, they've all returned to cheer you on. And then, of course, your family are here in the MasterChef kitchen to support all of you. Caesar, you have your mom, Maria, your sisters, Elda and Diana. Ashley, here to support you is your boyfriend, Damien, your father, Henry, and your mother, Aletha. Jerome, here supporting you tonight is your fiance, Brandy, your father, Christopher, and your grandma, Elizabeth. It's now time to put together the best three-course dinner you could ever dream of. One incredible appetizer, one stunning entree, and one delicious dessert. Your reputations and ours are on the line. This time, there are three judges that want to win. And that means we expect a three-course masterpiece. You'll each have 10 minutes in the pantry to collect everything that you need to cook us the best three-course dinner of your lives. Your time in the pantry starts... now. Let's go. This is the battle of the century. Raspberries and my money is all on Jerron at this point. Smoke paprika. He's been the underdog since day one, but his passion and drive for how he cooks is the reason why he's here. I have no doubt in my mind that Jerron is gonna be the next Master Chef. Gotcha, thank you. There's only one person that is gonna win it all. I think it's Caesar. He's got the knife skills and the food knowledge. He has experience. Under this pressure, he's gonna be focused and he's gonna get it done and hopefully come out on top. Uh. I want Ashley to win. Come on, from Miami. If I couldn't take it, somebody from South Florida needs to bring this home. Collard greens. Ashley is a powerhouse. She has become so fierce in this kitchen. And that is the attitude that you need to take this trophy home. Let's go. Caesar, Ashley and Jerome, the grand finale is about to begin. And of course, it all starts with the appetizers. Caesar, what will you be making for your appetizer? I'll be preparing a squid ink infladita with lobster, dragon fruit salsa, and a roasted poblano sauce. Ashley, what will you be making for your appetizer? Tonight, I'm preparing a pan-seared red snapper with spicy kunk salad, malonga fritters, and an ahi coconut sauce. Jaron, what are you going to be making for your first course? Tonight, I'll be making a Nashville hot quail with a fingerling potato salad and poached quail eggs. This is it. You'll have just one hour to make us your amazing appetizers. Three plates of each. 
Are you ready? Yes, yes Joe. Joe. Don't let us down. Your time starts now. This is it. Let's go. This is it. I mean, one of the most important nights of their culinary career. Also, a big night for us. For the first time, we are competing against each other. May the best judge win. We lit, baby, we lit. We gotta move fast, baby, tonight. Come on, y'all. Let's go, come on. Come on, guys. Let's go. This is it, the MasterChef Grand Finale. Whip, whip, baby, whip, whip. Whip, whip. Heard that. This year, we're mentoring individual talent. Yes, we're highly competitive, but we're going to be judges to all three of them this evening. If your contestant or your contestant gives me the best dishes of the night, yes. I'm going to be with you and crowning them as America's Chef sure. Master Chef. Jerome, he's doing Nashville hot quail. It's his audition dish that he's taken it from a chicken to a quail. Does he know how to cook a quail properly? He's never cooked a quail before. There we go. 30 seconds over the quail, it's going to be a dry quail. It's a big risk, but that's the kind of guy he is. He's taken the tradition, he's evolved it. The guy's honest, he cooks with a lot of heart, sure. and everything tells the story. The way that Jerron could fall down is that his dish is too simple. The flavors are not elevated. Yeah. Fingerling potatoes and quail's eggs. I don't know if you're going to elevate that. There's only so far I can go with that stuff. What worries me a little bit is his plating. He's made a lot of progress, it's still a concern. For that team, Ashley on. So, actually, the appetizer, that pan-seared red snapper with a florid and salsa with conch in there. She's playing to her strengths. She's cooking food from her back garden. But the idea of conch, it's a sea snail from the Caribbean. It's a very difficult shellfish to nail. So, listen, if there's one person in this competition who can nail it, it's Ashley. Another habanero, some mango. You know what, Ashley, using so much fruit, are you concerned that sometimes managing the sweetness and acidity of fruit, whether it be citrus, mangoes, pineapple? Uh, that's a good question, but she's got two proteins there, the pan-fried red snapper and the course of conch. So, you, know, you need to balance that up with the heat, the sweet, and that level of acidity. You got this, Caesar. Sorry, little guy. Oh, oh gosh. I apologize before doing it, all right? <laughs> Caesar is taking a very humble ingredient like the corn tortilla, elevating it by putting squid ink into it, frying it so it can puff up and house all these beautiful lobster and different elements in there. There's a lot riding on the execution of that little puffed up tortilla. But why take a risk just as a shell to put lobster in? It's texture, it's flavor, and it's a striking presentation. It's made with squid ink. That seems kind of like really off the rails for me. Well, do they make squid ink pasta in Italy? They do, but they've done it for centuries. Have they made squid ink tortillas in Mexico for centuries? They have not. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we have 15 minutes down. We have 45 minutes to go, guys. Come on. OK, Jerome. Tell me about your appetizers. What I want to do tonight is to elevate my Nashville hot chicken by doing it with a quail. Quail is much bonier, much smaller. The it meat's is. It's dark, not white. Will it take the spice? Will it take the heat? Does it translate? Are you taking such a big risk with swapping out quail for chicken? Can you make it work? I can definitely make it work, and I'll let you be the judge of that. Yeah. Eye on the prize, baby. I'm bringing it home for us, you know? We can go to Italy. You want to go to Italy with me? I do. I want to go, and you got to make sure your mother's there. And tough. We go to Italy to meet my mama. You have to pay because you'll be a quarter of a million dollars richer, I think. I'll pay for you. You'll pay for me. I'll pay for you. <laughs> do you speak Italian, Jerome? I don't, but you know what? I'm a quick learner. I'll leave you one word. Buona fortuna, my friend. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. 30 minutes remaining. 30, heard. Let's go, Ash. Right, young lady. Yeah, chefs. Give us an insight to the dish. 
Living in Opelaka, you live around so many different cultures. My grandfather has roots in Bahamas, wow. so that's where the kunk salad representation is. I have an aunt who's Peruvian, so that's why the sauce has that theme. And then, you know, in, in Miami, you can get locally caught seafood all day, every day. So it, it, it's a representation of my childhood and my foundation in culinary. That skin on that snapper is delicious when it gets nice and crispy. How are you going to cook it? I'm pan searing it in some oil, and then afterwards, I'm going to rotate it over and baste it in a lot yeah. of butter. Put everything you know, live for, breathe for, on that plate. Yeah, chef. Good luck, Thank Ashley. Thank you. She ready. 20 minutes remaining. Come on. Cesar. Chef Aron, how are how you? How are you, my man? I'm doing great, You're doing chef. doing good? Yes, yeah, chef. So talk to me about your appetizer. I'm doing an infladita, which is corn dough that you part cook on the griddle, and then you throw it in the deep fryer so they puff up, make a hollow shell, and then I'm going to fill it in with this lobster that's going to get tossed in this tomato sauce, chef. Caesar, a lot can go wrong with that. What happens if the infladitas don't puff up? Well, then I might have to change the shape of my dough and call it something else, chef. I got you. <laughs> so you might be a taco by the end of the day, huh? Exactly, pretty much. All right, Cesar. Keep your eye on the prize, people. Yes, All right, chef. you're almost there. Almost there. Come on. We are coming down to 10 minutes to go. Come on, guys, pick it up. 10 minutes, baby, 10 minutes. With minutes to go, Caesar, he may have to change direction. Because once they're toasted, he puts them in the fryer to blister. And it's that blister that puffs them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Almost like a souffle potato. Exactly. If it doesn't puff up, where, where'd you go? He's going to be in trouble. He's doing them now? Yeah, he's actually doing them now. He's doing them now. Give me a whole tap. It's up. Caesar, they're puffing up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. If it doesn't puff up, where, where'd you go? He's gonna be in trouble. It's up. Caesar, they're puffing up. Oh my god. Oh, my God. Oh, Caesar. Que bonito tortilla. That's puffed, right? Do they collapse? No, not at all. As long as they have enough time to rest. Wow. <laughs> quail eggs, quail eggs, quail eggs, quail eggs. Where are they? There they go. Joe, here is the $250,000 question. How is Jerron's big fingers and hands going to peel a quail leg? Yes, he does have big hands. But I told him, think small, think dainty. And I think he's going to make it. Oh, got to speed it up. We're down to five minutes to go. This is it, guys. No! Ashley, this is where she's learned so much from the competition. She's tasting everything. All that sweetness and acidity, she better taste everything, because she's walking a high wire. Is she going to overcook her snapper? No, definitely not overcook the snapper. 90% of that cooking will take place in that skin. So we'll see that crispness, and that will protect the fish and keep it moist. That snapper is so difficult to cook right. You have to get it just right. It could be too dry. I'm yep. nervous. My one concern with Jaron right now, he spent so long on those quail's eggs, mm. it's insignificant. Now he's putting dots on the plate, fingerling potatoes. The hero is the quail. Yeah. Focus on the quail, get that on the plate first, and then put all your little extras on. Caesar has so much he has to do. He has to break those little infladas, stuff them with his lobster mixture, plate, and he's been known to do very elaborate plating. So with three minutes to go, Caesar has nothing on the plate yet. Nothing. Ya falta bien poquito. Y todavía tiene que plate. Yeah, yeah, start plating, start plating. Woo! Let's go! I just don't think he's gonna finish in time. Not only that, his tortilla shell is hot, his lobster mixture is hot. Is that gonna break the integrity of it? Yeah. Last minute, 60 seconds to go. Come on, guys. 60 seconds, Jesus! Come on, Sharon. Let's go! Come on, Ash. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Let's go! Ten seconds to go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Well done. Well done. Oh my God. 
Now, all three of you, please, very carefully, bring your appetizers down to the front. <laughs> Caesar, Ashley, Jerron, these dishes look phenomenal. They're so unique and distinct. You have done us proud, and you've done yourselves proud. Please bring those stunning appetizers into the MasterChef restaurant. The appetizer round sets the bar for my three-course meal, and that's why I wanted to deliver on all cylinders. I'm representing Chef Gordon in this, and I didn't come to play it safe tonight. I really am going in with a lot of technique and a lot of skill set that I want the judges to see with this appetizer. Right, Ashley, please present us your appetizer. Ashley, please describe this dish. Tonight, I've prepared for you a pan-seared red snapper with spicy kunk salad, malanga fritters, and an ahi coconut sauce. This plate has a lot going on. So the first thing we need to see is obviously the star protein of the dish, your snapper. When I cut it open, it should glisten, it should be moist, it should be flaky. We don't want it to be dry. Yes, Joe. If you have not cooked the snapper properly, that would put you significantly behind in this competition. I'm ready. Let's take a look. I have to say, Ashley, this snapper for me is... Ashley. I have to say, Ashley, this snapper for me is overcooked and dry. That's a pretty novice mistake to make at this point in the competition. There's an incredible heat component in the fritter. What is that? A uh, scotch bonnet. The heat is very, very aggressive. You took a big risk, but the dish as a whole just reeked of too much ambition. Ashley. I love your courageous nature of cooking. And I'm sorry, my colleagues have very European palates. <laughs> that spice is perfect. It tastes like the sun, it's warm. And the cook on the snapper for me is good. It's, it's right there, it's textbook. Really great job. Thank you. Ashley. Yes, Chef. Um, my fish was cooked beautifully. The seasoning's on point. Fritters, delicious. But there's one issue with this this coconut sauce, it broke. When you stick that amount of heat on top of a sauce like that, it'll break. So you need to be smart in emulsifying that and don't let that residual heat from the snapper spoil it. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Next up, the young home cook that I chose to give my apron to, Caesar. So I have a squid ink infladita, which means puff one, filled with lobster. Then I have a dragon fruit pico on the outside, caviar, and a roasted poblano sauce. I'm always marveled by you. I'm inspired by the way that you view Mexican food in particular. My concern, very simply, is that did you put one element too much to overpower all these different flavors? Uh, no, I think everything I chose to go on there complements everything else, and I think I found balance in that plate. Caesar, that corn flavor of the inflada comes out beautifully, and it kind of becomes this little sponge for all that wonderful flavor of the lobster. I just dig so much. What I don't like, dragon fruit, it's a very difficult fruit to master, and I think it doesn't belong on this dish. Okay. But really impressive. Thank you. I have to say, Caesar, this dish hits the standard of excellence in a plate. Thank you, Jim. The poblano has a nice, smoky richness. What really kind of makes this dish sing is that the lobster is cooked very well and seasoned really well. Excellent job. Very impressive. Thank you. 
I think MasterChef has just had their first UFL landing. Unidentified flying lobster. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a spaceship, <laughs> a very posh spaceship. But I love the ambition. You've nailed the lobster. Lobster's could be sweet. The roasted poblano sauce, the heat, it's just beautifully done. Caviar, big no-no. When you've got that heat, the last thing you want to go is that salty, expensive caviar. Okay, sure. But that squid ink in that tortilla, love the flavor. That saltiness from the sea, absolutely incredible. And you've taken it down a route that very few Mexican chefs would. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Sims. Next up, Jerome. You have a Nashville hot quail with a fangling potato salad and poached quail eggs. The dish is beautiful. It shows your journey. You know, my inspiration for tonight is family. The frying technique is something that my mom taught me, but I wanted to find a way to elevate that to restaurant quality. Jerome, I'm gonna take a bite of that quail. It needs to be moist, it needs to be spicy, it needs to be crispy. If all that happens on my palate, you have a dish that could win. Jerome, I've never tasted anything quite like that before. Jerome, I've never tasted anything quite like that before. This is kind of like perfection. The quail meat is flavorful. The batter is well seasoned. The spiciness of the Nashville hot sauce is spot on, perfect. And there's so many different things going on on this dish and they're all really well done. My criticism would be perhaps it lacks the cohesiveness of one conceptualized appetizer. If you go down south and you have Nashville hot chicken, your options are a coleslaw or a potato salad. That's exactly what I wanted to provide you guys, a taste of me on a plate. You know, Jerome, I appreciate that. And you are so bound to that tradition that it's been great and it's got you to here. But now, not everything has to be a strict reference to where you come from anymore. It's time for you to fly. I disagree with you, Joe. I think this is exactly what MasterChef is intended to do, to bring out the best in you with us helping you with technique. So this says so much about your evolution. I think frying is the lost art in the kitchen, and it's a true art, and I think you've done that. Fantastic job. Thank you, Chef. Jaron, I think you've done a great job. Quail's slightly gamey. The coating, delicious. You've elevated a fast food, and you paid respect to your upbringing. I love the dish. Good job. Thank you. So guys, an amazing start. Please head back to the kitchen. Entrees are up next. Wow, come on, what an amazing start. Three stunning appetizers. Whose appetizer had the edge? Caesar's plate had it for me. It took the most risks and it paid the biggest dividends. I agree, I think that's one of these best dishes ever cooked. It pains me to say this, but I think Jaron had the dish for me. Jaron was so masterful with frying that quail. But I feel that he was just always in his box and the finale would be the perfect moment for him to take off. Now, actually, she may have fell short on the appetizers, but this is a marathon and it's not all on one course. Two more courses to go. Let's go get our entrees. All three of you did an incredible job, but that was just the first course. It is time for your entrees. Are you three ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Yes, chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Let's go. Right, 
Guys, this is it. Come on. Amazing. Three of the best appetizers we've ever seen in the history of this competition. Now, we got to follow suit with incredible entrees. Come on, Woo! I'm really interested to see not only the dishes, but the progression of the menu at this so, point. You don't want to make lateral movements. Each course takes it up another level. Let's go, let's go! For my entree, I'm making a pan-seared guinea hen breast, black-eyed peas, and collard green ragu with a quince cognac sauce. Let's go, babe. I really am focusing on using every part of the guinea hen. Woo. I have some ground to make up in this entree round, but what I'm doing is a whole nother level of difficult. So if I pull this off, I'm right back in this game. Oven open. Smells good. Let's go, Caesar. For my entree, I'm making a pan-seared duck breast, charcoal grilled vegetables, and an almond mole. Besides getting the temperature correct on the duck, to try to accomplish mole in 60 minutes is gonna be ludicrous. Done correctly, it's a beautiful texture and flavor profile. Look at what Caesar's do. A mole normally takes all day. Yeah. In one hour, too ambitious. The thing that could go wrong is that it's not enough time to fully develop all the components, but I'm doing something completely different, and I hope that bodes well for me. Mexico te está viendo! Your mom is cruising, I love it. I am making carabinero prawns with heirloom grits, shellfish jus, and crispy shallots. So, pretty much a shrimp and grits. Mmm, perfect. That was one of my mom's absolute favorite dishes. What I'm doing tonight is in memory of her. 45 minutes to go, guys. Come on. Stay focused, Gerard. Young man, question, how does it feel to be mentored by one of the best restaurateurs anywhere on the planet? You know what? Everybody knows I love Joe. We don't, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Okay. So that, we makes, don't. that makes one of us. <laughs> but you both have one big thing in common. Joe's mum was a massive influence on him. Yep. Your mum was a huge influence on you. Always. You know, when my mom passed away in the last supper that I had with her, she ordered shrimp and grits. And so, you know, it's only right for me to elevate a shrimp and grits dish. I live in the South, so I know it. How are you going to elevate to make it something beautiful? You know what, Chef? My presentation has been something that I've worked on constantly in this competition. And so I'm ready to show you guys how much I've grown and how much flavor I can put into a shrimp and grits in such little time. All right. Good luck, young man. You got Thank this. You. Come on. Well Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Ashley, you know, you're having arguably the best chef in the world yes. mentor you. That's a huge honor. Of course. How has he guided you through this whole competition? He makes me fearless. I feel like I've tried so many new things because of him at Guinea Hen. I've never done before, but I'm using every part, part to the thigh, to the breast, and my collard greens are cooking down. I'm going for it. You picked one of the leanest, the most difficult birds to cook, that guinea hen. Yes, when I cut it open, I see a red bloodline, it's undercooked. If I cut the center of it and it's mealy, grainy, and dry, it's overcooked. You are walking on a very, very high wire. Yep. High wire, highest, baby, highest. Good luck. Thank you. 25 minutes remaining. Right, uh, young man, uh, give me a little insight to the dish. What are you cooking? I'm making a pan-seared duck breast, charcoal roasted vegetables, and an almond mole. Wow, he's crazy. Loco. You have a recipe for a 60-minute mole? Working on it. How do you do a mole in an hour? We're, we're, we're baffled. I couldn't go with the traditional mole from Puebla, so I had to pick a different mole based on wajillo peppers and almonds. You have a mentor who's one of the best Mexican chefs anywhere on the planet. He knows you can't fast-track a mole in 60 minutes. What are you doing? I chose mole for my entree because doing something this difficult is one way to prove that I'm worthy of the title of America's Next Master Chef. The chefs in Mexico that spend a year making the mole. I, I know. You're but... doing it in 60 <laughs> freaking minutes. I knew going into it was a gamble, and I mean, right now I'm feeling like I might have made a mistake. 60 minute mole, it better be freaking good. Caesar, the chefs in Mexico that spend a year making the mole. I, I know. But You're doing it in 60 <laughs> freaking minutes. 60 minutes. It's ambitious, but if I want this title, those are the kind of moves that I have to make, chef. Mama, what is he doing? Se ve bien. Maravilloso. That's how good he is. You can do it. Hearing my mom and my sisters cry out from the balcony reminds me of why I chose mole to begin with. Woo! I'm here to make my family proud and make myself proud and showcase dishes that represent me and my upbringing and my roots and my home. Good luck, Cesar. Good luck. Thank Sounds you, thank amazing. You Good luck. Let's go, babe. Let's go, girlie.
We are down to the last 10 minutes. Let's go. Stop yapping. There's a lot of steak here. Three really ambitious entrees. Jerome is doing basically elevated shrimp and grits, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, those prawns look amazing. The color is gorgeous. My big question about Jerome's entrees, can you elevate it? Yep. Very few chefs in this country have taken that to the Premier League. But, come on, the last meal with his mum, the dish that she ordered, he's replicating that dish out of respect for her. Talk about somebody that's working with lots of heart. So as she's making a pan-seared guinea hen, that's going to be set on a puree of black-eyed peas with those incredible collard greens. So she's bringing that French influence into the deep south. Yeah. But guinea hen are wild birds. It's a little bit gamey, a little bit richer, less fat. So difficult protein to cook. Come on, Caesar. That manic mailman speed. My big worry tonight for the entrees has to be Caesar. I don't know if that rich, gamey duck breast can be cooked perfectly with a mole that can be done in 60 minutes. It's amazing. I believe in him. If there's one guy that moves fast enough to get a mole done, it's that crazy local man right there. And that mole right now from here has the right color. I like the consistency. It looks great. That looks amazing. Amazing. You play me for. Five and a half minutes to go. Let's go, Jerron. Oh, it looks so good. Woo! Oh, Ash. Yes. Looks good, Ash. I'm smelling a burning smell, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. Oh. I peek into my collard greens, and they are burnt. She's doing the collard greens, right? I'm having a panic attack. I can't have any mistakes on the plate like I did in my appetizer round. We're down to four minutes to go, guys. Ashton might be a little behind. Is she redoing it? I think so, it looks like. Come on, come on, come on. She's cooking collard greens twice. Oh, my lord. Come on, Ashley, let's go. You can do it. She's crazy. That's Ashley for you. Oh, my god. Three minutes to go. Woo. This is it, guys. Start plating. Come on. Plating. Come on, babe. Here we go. Ash, you got to start plating, don't you? Ashley, come on, girl. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Girl, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. Forget about the greens. Start plating. Guys, I don't think Ash is going to make it. Minutes to go, and she hasn't even finished cooking. Next time, this is it. The world's biggest cooking competition continues. Come on, Come on, baby! As the three best home cooks in America battle it out over the final two courses. Only one. It's exceptional. We'll walk away. I love it. With a quarter of a million dollars. My God. Perfection. And the Master Chef title. The winner is. One potato, two potato.